to speak to that fact. Mr. Speaker, sir, that is a question that has also received judicial interpretation. If I may, in the election petition number three of 2013 filed in the High Court in Busia, similar applications, I mean, a similar application was made again objecting to the participation of the Honorable James Orengo Senior Counsel in the proceedings in that matter. The judge handling that case interpreted both Article 77 as read with Section 26 of the Leadership and Integrity Act and had this to say at paragraph 23, 28, sorry, that it had been argued that by representing a party in an election petition, the Honorable Senator would be compromising the political neutrality of his office. I would not agree. Section 23 of this act is a provision on political neutrality expected of appointed state officers. Honorable Orengo holds an elective position. Elected members of Senate are politicians. The provisions of Section 23 do not apply uh, to them. So even if it was to be assumed that, they, uh, that by representing the third respondent, Honorable Orengo is pursuing a political agenda, that would not be inimical to his office as a member of the Senate. And so, Mr. Speaker, I submit that unless there is material that will be tabled before this House that by appearing for a party before this House, then the Honorable uh, Mr. James Orengo Senior Counsel would have engaged in, uh, in, in uh, gainful employment that objection does not stand any merit. Number two, the second test that has been applied by courts is the test around conflict of interest. Again, Mr. Speaker, the, our courts have had occasion to interpret what amounts to conflict of interest. In a case determined by a five-judge bench, a case uh, reported in our laws, that is EKLR 2018, the case of Philomena Betemwilu versus the DPP and two, uh, two others. The bench, in determining and dismissing a similar application, defined conflict of interest as a situation where one is confronted by two different interests so that serving one interest would be against the other. Mr. Speaker, sir, there hasn't been any conflict of interest that has been, even in the least, mentioned by uh, the, uh, the objector to the participation of uh, senior counsel, the Honorable uh, James Orengo. Finally, has there been an indication as to any prejudice that could be occasioned by the participation of uh, the Honorable James Orengo Senior Counsel before this house this afternoon? To the best of my recollection, none has been mentioned. Is counsel, for instance, saying that the participation of the Honorable James Orengo before the proceedings in this house would be such that they would fundamentally impair their defense when they get the opportunity to present the case? I'm just asking myself, that has not been said. In any case, Mr. Speaker, sir, if that was to be the case and the fear that has been presented, then as advocates, as counsel, we operate within very clear and defined rules. Those rules are meant to ensure that a party before this house, just like would be a party before any court or any other forum, does not suffer or does not have a compromise to their uh, uh, rights to fair hearing under Article 50. In the absence of any prejudice that has been mentioned before you, we urge that that objection be dismissed. I've also had occasion to look at the case that was uh, referred to by my learned friend, Mr. Njiru, and with respect, that case turned on two critical points. The first one being that the participation of the Honorable James Orengo as a senator in that matter was said to have had the potential of compromising his participation friends or departure between what uh, led to the finding in that decision and what we have before you. The judges, I mean the judge in that specific matter also went on to add 
that there must also be established a question or a fact of uh, uh, benefit. Again, I reiterate that no indication, no evidence, or even assertion has been presented before this House to suggest that the Honorable uh, James Orengo Senior Counsel has in any way benefited by being in this House participating as counsel. So with that, Mr. Speaker, sir, we urge that that objection be dismissed. I am most obliged.